Module 4, Session 2. Session 2 will cover Learning Outcomes 3.3.1, 3.3.2 and 3.3.3 .3, using compound and double angle identities. These learning outcomes will be covered in two parts. Learning Outcome 3.3.1, 3.3.2 and 3.3.3 .3, using compound and double angle identities, Part 1. Now we move on to the new work in trigonometry for this level. A compound angle is an angle that is written as a sum or difference of two other angles. Of course, any angle can be written in this way, but the important thing is to recognize when it is useful to do so and to apply the identities. Here are the identities. Sin alpha plus beta equals sin alpha multiplied by cos beta plus cos alpha multiplied by sine beta. Sine alpha minus beta equals sine alpha multiplied by cos beta minus cos alpha multiplied by sine beta. Cos alpha plus beta equals cos alpha multiplied by cos beta minus sine alpha multiplied by sine beta. Cos alpha minus beta equals cos alpha multiplied by cos beta plus sine alpha multiplied by sine beta. The compound identities appear as numbers 10 and 11 on the formula sheet. Notice that the form that they are written in here might be slightly confusing for students. Teaching tips. Students often struggle with adding and subtracting like terms in trig and need plenty of practice with this. Students need to recognize these identities and apply them in both directions. Help students remember the signs in the identities like this. Sine starts with S, so the sign stays the same. Cos starts with the letter C and stands for change. The sign in the identity changes. To illustrate that again, sine starts with S, so the sign stays the same. Cos starts with the letter C and stands for change, so the sign in the identity changes. Let's watch a video of a lecturer applying compound angle identities. This example also works with special angles. Trigonometry. Let's look at the following example. Use the formula cos theta minus beta to determine, without using a calculator, the value of cos 15 degrees. The first thing that we need to do is we need to express cos 15 degrees in that form. How will we do that? It's going to become cos 15 degrees is equal to cos. Now we're going to use special angles. Cos of 45 degrees, which is the first special angle, minus cos of 30 degrees. And if you subtract 45 minus 30, that gives you 15. As a result of that, we will then need to draw the triangles with regards to 45 degrees, and we need to draw the triangles with regards to 30 degrees. Right angle triangle. 45 degrees, 1, 1, the square root of 2. Then another right angle triangle, this is 60, that's 90 degrees, and that is 30. Then that becomes 2. 1, and with the 8 of Pythagoras, that will be the square root of 3. These two triangles is very important for us to find that information. The next step is now we need to expand this by using the formula sheet. And on the formula sheet, if we look at formula number 11, then we will get the following equivalent. Cos... 45 cos 30 
According to the formula sheet, it will then become plus sine 45 and sine of 30. And now we will engage with these two triangles. Square bracket, square bracket, plus square bracket, and square bracket. Now we need to apply the following mnemonic. So, for sine and ka for cos, meaning sine is opposite of hypotenuse, cos is adjacent of hypotenuse. Cos of 45, 45 cos adjacent of hypotenuse, 1 over the square root of 2. Cos of 30, adjacent of hypotenuse, the square root of 3 is to 2. Sine of 45, opposite of hypotenuse, 1 over the square root of 2. Sine of 30, opposite of hypotenuse, 1 over 2. Remove the brackets. You will get there square root 3 over 2, square root 2, plus 1 over 2, square root 2. Let me simplify this. You will get your 2 square root 2, same denominator. And then you will get square root 3 plus 1. But we cannot stop there because we must never stop with a third being part of the denominator. That means we need to get rid of that third by rationalizing that denominator. And how will we do that? You multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. Take note, not 2 times the square root of 2 because the reason is you only want to get rid of that square root. Now you're going to multiply a monomial with a binomial. Square root 2 times square root 3, that equals to square root 6, plus square root 2 times 1, that gives you square root 2, over 2 times square root 2 times square root 2, that means it's 2 times 2, that is equal to 4. Therefore, cos of 15 degrees is equal to square root 6 plus square root 2 over 4. And we haven't used the calculator because we keep the answer in the third form. Work on your own or in pairs for this activity where you'll be proving trig identities using compound angle identities. In the first question, you will be proving one of the co-function identities. In fact, all of the other co-function identities can be proved in a similar way, using compound angles. Question 2 involves proving a trig identity with tan. A skill that students need to learn is how to recognize and apply different facts and identities in the same question. Think about how you would help your students with these type of questions as you work through them. We will now watch a video. Here we have another proof of a co-function. Cos 90 degrees plus alpha is equal to minus sine of alpha. As it is the case with proofs, we will once again start by writing down our left-hand side. Our left-hand side is cos bracket 90 degrees plus alpha is equal to. This is a compound angle and with the aid of our formula sheet, by looking at formula number 11, we're going to expand that. And when we expand it, it becomes cos of 90, 
cos of alpha will become minus sine of 90 and sine of alpha. What is very important now, now you can either go two roots, you can punch in cos of 90 and sine of 90, or what I prefer normally is, let's consider this right angle triangle where you have 90 degrees there and you have 90 degrees here and obviously that will be no degrees. Remember in reality it doesn't exist but it's just an easy way of remembering it. Then this is an isosceles triangle, one day, one day and zero there. And then obviously sine and cos, again our mnemonic. So this is the tools that we will use in order to answer the question now. Then obviously, from this, cos is adjacent of hypotenuse. When you look at cos of 90, adjacent, obviously, that immediately tells you you're going to get zero there. Times cos alpha minus sine of 90. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. You will have one there. Sine of alpha and you can clearly see you will get minus sine of alpha. Therefore, left hand side is equal to right hand side. We have a problem here that relates to a proof. Tan alpha plus beta is equal to tan alpha plus tan beta over 1 minus 10 alpha times 10 beta. What is very important, whenever do we do a proof, we need to prove that the left-hand side must be exactly equal to the right-hand side. So the very first thing that we're going to write down here will be left-hand side. And then what do we have on the left-hand side? We have 10. alpha plus beta. If you look at the formula sheet, then you will see that according to formula number 5, the quotient identity for tan is sine divided by cos. Now, why do I do that? Because whenever you do a proof, as you move towards proving the proof, it's always to look at the right-hand side. That's the reason why the first thing is, on my right-hand side, I do have a fraction. That's why I'm expressing now the 10 as a fraction, which is the quotient identity, which will be sine alpha plus beta over cos alpha plus beta. My next step will be then, I move to my formula sheet and I am expressing the compound angle sine alpha plus beta in its expanded form. And that you will find on formula number 10. The expanded form for sine alpha plus beta according to formula number 10 will be sine alpha cos beta plus sine beta cos alpha. And if you look at formula number 11, you will get the expanded form for cos of alpha plus beta, which will be cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta. That's where we are now. Now again we're looking at our right hand side. On my right hand side I've already got the format right because in my numerator I do have a plus which is a plus 
on my denominator I have a minus which is a minus but now I need to do some modification in order to get this in terms of tan alpha and tan beta and that is the reason why in order to modify it to get it into that form I will now divide each term on top as well as the bottom with cos alpha cos beta. Why do I do that? Because if I look at my denominator there, cos alpha cos beta, if I divide by it, I will get that one. And that's the reason why I'm going to follow that route. So I will have my line here. And then I will have the first term, sine alpha cos beta over cos alpha cos beta plus sine beta cos alpha over cos alpha cos beta. Same with the bottom one. Cos alpha cos beta divided by cos alpha cos beta minus again there sine alpha sine beta divided by cos alpha cos beta. I hope we are all clear on that. And now we're going to simplify. You can clearly see there the first term, the cos betas will cancel out. And then you're going to get sine alpha over cos alpha plus in the second instance you will clearly see that the cos b cos alphas cancel out so you will have sine beta over cos beta over you will see exactly the same cos alpha cos alpha cos beta cos beta that will give you one not zero because you divide minus and then in this instance here, yeah, you will clearly see that that will give you, I can even split it now, you will get sine alpha over cos alpha, and then split the next one, you will have sine beta over cos beta. And then finally, sine alpha over cos alpha is the reciprocal identity for tan alpha plus exactly the same sine over cos tan beta 1 minus tan alpha and tan beta now we have proved it, and it's always nice to end off by saying, therefore, left hand side is equal to right hand side. People, take note, we haven't jippoed the left hand side equal to the right hand side. We have proved it.